All right, this is actually day number five, exam day. Uh, however, I haven't discussed day four, so this is a little bit of a combination of day four and exam day all in one. So I will say that the last couple of days, three and four, have been long days. Now this isn't going to be typical of most Niagara uh, in four certification classes. However, for this particular one, this is the first time that Distech controls and these particular trainers, uh, Kevin Amoroso, has put on this particular training. So uh, there's a little bit of uh, prepar preparation and getting things set up properly for the next class and making sure the documentation is correct and the steps are in the right order. So there was a lot of things that kind of made the, the class, I think, trying to cram all the information at once and, and fixing any problems as we went along the way. So the last two days have literally been from like 7, 7.30 in the morning till like 6, 6.30 at night. Uh, it's been power packed with all the information required uh, to accomplish the course and the exam. Um, some of the things, uh, let me go through real quick. Day four, uh, started out with loading the uh, station into the Jace. Uh, we also did some commissioning of the Jace, which is a very typical process. Um, we talked about the relationships, the hierarchies, which to a lot of people were like, especially me, I was just blowing me away about figuring out, you know, what the heck are these hierarchies? And essentially, um, they are a non-graphical way to be able to see all the different controllers or buildings or however you want to group information or devices in the nav tree on the left hand side and uh, I think after the fourth day we, we were comfortable in knowing what they were used and how all the tags and data tags came together uh, to form those hierarchies so that was a good thing to finally reach that point. Uh, in addition to that uh, let's see we had uh, talked about history groups and history trends uh, went through several services uh, that I had personally not used uh, in setting up stations before things like uh, user authentication the category groups things that I just hadn't for some of the small projects that I had worked on before coming to the training uh, just really hadn't taken the time to set up it was usually something that I put together and gave it to one of our customers who is would be a mechanical or an integrator and then they had their uh, changes and modifications to make after it you know left my hands uh, so that was good to uh, see what some of those other important services are uh, we also got around to setting up a supervisor uh, so that uh, that essentially setting up a supervisor to be able to pull in information. So we talked about how to connect the histories and the alarms to be able to get routed uh, back to a main supervisor, which is like a PC to store things. So that was definitely good. Hadn't actually set that up on my own in the shop. So it was good to actually go through the steps to do that. Uh, and finally, I talked about some little things like a nav file, setting up nav files and things like that. So other little small things in between. Exam. All right, so the exam definitely is something that's hands-on. In case you were wondering, there's no multiple choice. You don't pick answers or write out answers. It's literally uh, getting handed a little, a uh, few pages, stapled pages, and going through the steps of actually uh, setting up a station and a project live on the uh, EC Boss, which is Distex uh, Jace. So essentially, uh, it is actually hands-on going through the steps and, and making it. But to be honest with you, uh, the steps that are in this guide that is handed to you, man, I wish some of, of my customers would give me that much information. It's literally step by step, the things you need to do. Uh, the thing that's left out is how to do them. So hopefully if you paid attention in the class, you'll know where to click, you'll know where to drag and drop items, things like that. So it is relatively easy, I think. Um, I think the only differences between different people taking these this exam would be the time. How long does it take? Um, we actually, you know, all of us sat down and actually started on the exam at around 8.45 this morning. Uh, the first person was done, mm, I think maybe around 12.30 or so. Uh, this was a, an IT kind of, uh, IT strong guy who was also working for Woodman, I believe. Um, and uh, so he was very knowledgeable, had already done uh, these kinds of operations before, so he kind of whizzed right through it. So he was the first one to finish. I believe I was the second one, I'm not sure, but I finished it at 1.15, so about four and a half hours later. So I'm somebody who's completely new to Niagara. I'm not very strong in Niagara, but I have been messing with it for the last four or five months. So to kind of put it in perspective, I have been uh, creating stations and I have been uh, drawing out blocks and connecting wire sheets and things like that. So I'm not going to say I was a complete noob, but I am new to Niagara and uh, I finished in about four and a half hours. I'm also kind of techie. So if that kind of pushes the time, I think everybody's going to pass. I don't think there's this uh, any worry that you have to worry about 
maybe I don't pass. I think you're going to pass. It's just a matter of how long does it take. And as far as uh, the trainer said, uh, everybody had about, uh, you know, up until 545 tonight. So you literally have another eight hour day to finish the exam. It's not a big deal. I think most people will finish long before that. Um, and as far as scheduling flights, uh, kind of the way my company did it, and we recommend when we send other people to training classes that are our customers, uh, we recommend you don't try to fly out later that day, the same day, exam day. Uh, you never know what happens, uh, weather or any delays that would cause the trainer to need to keep going through the course material on exam day. Um, it's just going to prolong things, so don't plan on trying to rush to the airport and try to fly out by like 5 o'clock or something. So best thing to do is uh, if you can get a flight in the evening time after 5 or wait till the next day, which would be a Saturday or something like that. So that's what I'm doing. So now I've got a whole afternoon to check out the wonderful city of Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, last night, some of the guys went and threw some axes. Unfortunately, I totally missed out on that, uh, especially since somebody actually got stitches. I'm, I, none of our group. I think it was some other guy that was already there. But yeah, he actually got some stitches that night. There was some uh, blood spilt. <laughs> So, real deal, axe throwing, check it out. So I'm done, I'm done, I'm, I'm very confident that I, that I passed the exam, I don't know when we actually get the final word, it might be a day or two, um, but I think the most grueling part of the training is just sitting eight hours every day for four days straight, uh, you know, quote, learning stuff. Uh, I think that's the toughest part. If you make it through that and you stick around for the exam, you're gonna pass the exam and you'll get your certification. Um, don't know what else to say if you have any other comments or questions feel free to respond in linkedin or on the youtube channel uh the controls freak and uh look forward to making some more videos soon and uh i, I think i'm also going to make one more video once i get back uh to the office and kind of just give my thoughts on what is the value of this training what is the actual value of going through n4 certification how does it help who does it help and uh, kind of get a little bit of a just final thoughts together about the, the whole experience. Uh, if you've been watching all these videos, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get a chance to spit out some more videos soon. Take care.